Hi everyone. We're going to uh, do another test here because I wasn't really happy actually with my previous uh, test one of this uh, setup here, the uh, Flynn par Parallel Path. And the uh, what I've added here is the bar across the top here to allow the flux to actually move up when the coils are activated. So the previous video, I didn't have that bar across there and that changes a lot of the characteristics uh, that would actually need to be there for the flux to go to. So I've got a piece of iron here across the uh, two uh, poles here and on the bottom I've got another piece which is attracted magnetically. So I'm you know clicking that on right there, that's the attraction now, the coil is off. And um, what I decided to do is I attached uh, my uh, 555 circuit with uh, adjustable uh, duty cycle and uh, frequency. And I've got it at a very, very low frequency. And I'm still going to use this capacitor right here. But what I've done is I've charged it at a very low voltage. So right now that 30,000 microfarad capacitor is charged exactly at 3 volts and 3 volts is actually the ideal um, voltage to uh, activate and disactivate the, uh, the flux. And um, there is the scope shot right there of what the uh, uh, pulses uh, look like coming out of the 555 timer. And um, there is the uh, data right there. So we're pulsing at a very low frequency, under 1 hertz, 0.67 hertz, or 0.66 about. And the duty cycle is somewhere around 7% duty cycle. So it's a pretty short duty cycle, but, you know, it's a very slow timing period. Uh, what the idea here is, is that capacitor that's charged at 3 volts, okay, here is attached directly to the 555 circuit. But the circuit's working, but I haven't attached this leg here of the coil. So what I'll do is I'll just connect that leg of the coil, okay, and you'll see the magnet fall. And obviously that means that the flux gate has released. And then we'll calculate the uh, remaining uh, joules left in the capacitor. So I connect it now. And that was one pulse. So I was able to connect it, let, let it go before the next pulse comes up. So as you saw it released that small piece and the reason why I'm not too happy about my other tests as well is I used a transformer and that very heavy 8 pound transformer or whatever weight it is uh, is very difficult it's very easy for you know just a little flux change to let that go but if you take something light like this you know and it you know completely lets go obviously there is no magnetic flux left over at this uh, location so let's have a look here and see what our remaining uh, voltage is there at the capacitor so uh, it's going to be about 2.85 because that's still uh, climbing there a capacitor recovers uh, when it's hit like that so I'll do the uh, joule calculation now Okay, so here we go. We've got 3 volts at uh, 30,000 microfarad and that gives us a total of uh, 135 millijoules. Those are millijoules. And if we look at the next page, uh, here we have the voltage on the capacitor at uh, 2.85 volts, okay, 30,000 microfarad. And that gives us 121.83 uh, millijoules. So we've taken a total of uh, about 13.2 uh, 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 millijoules. All right, because there is the other, okay, 135 less 121.83. So very, very, very small amount of energy needed. To go there and let me show you the capacitor really is still even climbing at this uh, moment so it's at 2.8522 now probably even will go to 2.86 
by the time it uh, recovers. So that's uh, to show you that even though my calculation looked really good on the previous uh, test one video, uh, it's actually much, much better than that uh, on this video here. And test one wasn't really good uh, test because like I said, the uh, transformer is so heavy that it doesn't take very much energy to release a weight that's just about to fall anyways. So this is the true test here utilizing that. But the big difference is bridging the top here for the flux to, uh, to find its path. And because the flux goes from this here and is all pushed up here. So this becomes apparently about like three times more flux at the top here. So that's uh, as far as this uh, test is concerned. And what I'll do now is I'll hook up the, uh, the uh, coils here with a variable voltage, uh, DC voltage, and I want to show you something that's also very interesting there. Uh, just for the fun of it here, I'll give you one more uh, kick. There's our uh, voltage on the uh, capacitor there. So 2.8539, and we'll give you one more view here of another, one more connection. Okay, and 2.68 and climbing uh, much faster so obviously it'll go to 2.70 I'm quite sure and uh, there you go so there's another view of it and now what I'll do is I'll hook it up to just straight DC voltage and uh, no uh, pulse here and uh, see what we get Okay, here is the uh, DC test. So at this moment, the bar is still uh, magnetically uh, coupled there. And I'm already sending uh, two volts. And we're utilizing 59 uh, milliamps at two volts uh, at this time. So what I'll do right now is I'll raise the voltage. Okay, <laughs> I'm having a bit of a hard time here with the Variac because it's very, very sensitive, difficult to get that uh, voltage there. But you heard the, the uh, piece drop here. So right now there is no way that I can get anything to hold there. Even if I hold it in place, it's not holding at all. Uh, even a small, smaller piece here, here's a thinner piece, nothing holds. Here's a really, really thin one. So nothing was holding. So right now at that voltage, okay, we've got uh, 2.95 volts. Uh, we have the perfect uh, balance. That's why I use the three volts on the uh, capacitor there behind uh, to uh, trigger the coils with. Uh, ideally, uh, it looks like three volts, uh, constant DC, is uh, neutralizing the uh, flux here at the bottom. Everything is at the top now. So I wanted to show that and note the uh, current it's utilizing. So we've got about 85 milliamps at about 3 volts. Now the interesting thing though that I've noticed, and this is what I want to share, is if I continue raising my Variac voltage, okay, let's raise that. We're at uh, 3.5 volts now, 100 milliamps. And let's see what happens. Look at that. It's, it's now holding. Okay? And the higher voltage I keep raising, the more this is holding. I can't even pull it off. So that's... <laughs> it's, it's there. So it's very, very strong. Okay? <laughs> so it, there's a voltage point. What I'm trying to say is, there's a point where you don't want to send the voltage. L let me show you. When it drops, you'll hear the piece. There, the piece just dropped by itself. All right. Let me show that again. I'll raise it over three volts. Okay. So it's at 4.9. Okay. And I'll just turn down the variac completely and watch the piece fall. So the piece fell on its own when it reached about three volts. So there is an ideal uh, voltage for this. That's what I wanted to share.
Thanks for watching. Bye now.